Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Talking Point. It's that time of the week we discuss the biggest topics and talking points from around the world of football. Of course, joining me today is Michael McCubbin. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks, Zach. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Not too bad, thank you. <laughs> Why Joe are you Thompson. so professional? How are you doing? Not too bad. Thank you very much, Zachary Jalab. Good to hear. Good to hear. Now, as you've seen by the thumbnail and the title, we're here to talk and discuss about what the right club is for Jal Felix. He, at the moment, is obviously looking to leave Atletico Madrid. Currently, Atletico Madrid, uh, Atletico Madrid's chief executive, Miguel Angel Gilmarin has nice said in December nice. the reasonable thing is to think that Jao Felix will leave although I would love him to stay that is not the player's idea supposedly his relationship with Simeone has fallen apart and it is now unfixable <laughs> Atletico Madrid are looking for a 21 million euro fee package which includes a 15 million euro loan fee plus 6 million euros in wages for the rest of the season now that is ridiculous for just a loan but look We've discussed Jao Felix a few times, but I want to look more so at which club needs him more at the moment. There has been discussions about Paris Saint-Germain by Munich and Barcelona by the Spanish press, but apparently his most likely destination is the Premier League. So we're going to kick it off with Manchester United because Joe Tomlinson, mm. they need a striker, or at least they need a forward, and Jao Felix is a forward. Is he a striker, though? He has played striker. Where? He has played up. He's played in a front two at Atletico Madrid. Rarely has he played in a front two and scored consistent goals. Look, I love Jao Felix as a player I think he is incredibly gifted and I would have no major issue with Manchester United bringing him through the door as you said we need forwards mm. we do need forwards we need goals do I think he is the solution to Manchester United's number nine problem no I think Manchester United need a legitimate number nine that's going to play through the middle too many times over the last few years United have signed short term budget options in the number nine role, either aging players or players that have come in and had very little impact on a short term loan. And that needs to stop, absolutely needs to stop. So unless Joel Felix is going to come in on a short term loan for a, 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 a fraction of that outlay that's been sort of reported at 15 million euros, there's no way you're not actually paying 21 million euros for a six month loan, then I'm not convinced about the signing. I think he would be a really good option for United, but that fee, I don't think there's a need there. Is there a certain number where you'd be more, you'd be more open to? Yeah, I think if, you, if, if Manchester United were paying his wages and there was no loan fee. No loan fee at all. I, I'd be absolutely on that. But where do Manchester United see massive positives in this move? There's not going to be an option to buy. There's not going to be an obligation to buy. Mm. So you're effectively improving a player, player potentially for six months to then allow him to go back to Atletico Madrid. You're outlaying a huge sum of money in a position where... He's not a classic number nine. He might want to play off the left where Rashford is currently operating, uh, wow. doing some unbelievable work in those sort of interior lines. Sancho is going to come back. Garnaccio wants to play. Martial can play as an interior left as well. Like you've got Anthony on the right hand side. I don't see where he fits on paper, but that's not to say I wouldn't take him on loan if there wasn't a loan fee involved. Interesting. I mean, Mikey, if it gets yeah. later in this window and United still haven't managed to get a forward in and Jao yeah. Felix still hasn't been taken. Do you think that's something you guys should pursue? Obviously, in the summer, you guys were interested in him. Supposedly, you did put a bid in for him, and it was rejected by Atletico Madrid, according yeah. to The Athletic. If you yeah. say, you know, a week left, you still need a forward. Martial is your oh, only sorry. one. Yeah. No, but Marsh, if Martial is yeah. your only forward, at least going through the middle... Can't be a panic loan, though. The, uh, the, well, when you're paying 21 million euros... I think any, any, any deal in the final week of a window <laughs> the pressure is a panic buy in some ways. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree too too much with Joe. I think, I think the key thing is the fact that the, the, the lack of an option to buy. I think, you know, if you, if you have that 21 million euros down on the table yeah. and then it's like another 40 million option if, if Joao Felix can help Probably United more. get... Um, you know, Champions, Champions League football, or even if it's another fifty million or whatever, you know, and he and he, and he is the real deal. Then, um, you know, I think that's absolutely fine. I, I have reservations about it, but the problem is, and I know, like, I feel like Pat's talked about this a lot. There's not very many number nines about, are there? That you know, there was a lot of talk about Dusan Vlahovic back in December. I feel like that's gone a little mm. bit quiet. I feel like you know, a number nine in his mould. I feel like is what everyone wants. Obviously, Cody Gakpo. What a disaster that was. You know, him going to Liverpool, he really was Ten Hag's man and, uh, you know, showed at the World Cup especially how adept he can be at centre-forward. And also, uh, the thing is, it, it is weird because, you know, United do seem to be targeting these players who can play in multiple positions. And, you know, just 
despite Rashford being, you know, brilliant on the left recently, despite Garnacho coming through, like you say, Martial can also play there. Um, it, it does feel like Ten Hag still wants someone who can play both as a centre forward and uh, as, as a, as a uh, left inside forward. So it does make me think, you know, that, you know, he really is keen on Joao Felix in that sense. Um, and yes, he's been inconsistent for Atleti over the years. I think that, you know, probably has, you know, now we kind of can see it probably has had quite a lot to do with his relationship with Simeone. I know kind of getting in damaged goods can be, you know, is a risk. But at the same time, Man United as a place to come into, I think, is a a much safer place, I think, than it was even three, four months ago. Yeah. Um, you know, Ronaldo's out now. I think, you know, Ten Hag has, has you know, got everyone playing for him. And, you know, there is, you know, there is a poten- potential for, for someone who has, you know, struggled to come in and, and really thrive there. Um, the problem is, is that, yeah, we just haven't seen Joao Felix at Atletico Madrid thrive consistently in any one position. So it's hard to know wherever he goes, where he's going to slot in exactly. I think at United it would be, you know, as, you know, as a centre forward because we, we need a body there. Um, and Martial... You know, as much as Ten Hag has faith in him, can't stay fit and, you know, hasn't been, you know, great, has he, since since the, um, you know, since the Premier League has resumed. He, you know, missed that chance against Wolves that just instantly, you know, maybe it was a bit unfair, but just instantly kind of, you really know, took, took away my confidence in him a little bit. Um, so the short answer is, yes, I think I would take him. But, you know, we were talking actually off screen before as well about Marcus Turam. He was someone who I thought was, you know, a bit of an obvious choice for Liverpool, actually, before they went for Cody Gakpo. Um, and then uh, we put a video up suggesting him, you know, on the day that Gakpo said, <laughs> right? Um, but, you know, he was, you know, the last time I checked, available for £10 million this January. You know, his contract's up in the summer, you know, coming off a, a great World Cup. I mean, coming off a great half season as well, playing back at centre forward, which I think probably is his best position as opposed to that left wing position, which he mm. was playing a lot for, uh, you know, a lot at Mönchengladbach over the last two years. Um, so, yeah, he, he's another guy who I'm surprised hasn't, like, been talked about that much, especially given you know the role that he did play uh, for France in those last few games. Um, so there is other options out there, and you know, for a permanent fee for like a twenty, what twenty two, twenty three year old player who you know could be sold at a profit in the future, that seems to be a wiser move. Yeah, yeah. but we haven't heard that much about it. I think Ten Hag is clearly much hotter on someone like Jao Felix mm. and I'm inclined to trust him because most of his sightings have been pretty good so far. I like it, I like it. I'm sure we'll go into further detail on Manchester United and the signings they should be doing on a Sunday Vibes coming to your screens very soon. Uh, a club that he might fit into a little bit easier, Joe, Arsenal. Mm. Supposedly they are quite interested, especially with it being a loan. They view it more of a move that could be like when they signed Martin Odegaard, had a good loan with them and then managed to get a deal through in the, the, mm. the following summer um, obviously with the way that they play their football they've got a guy that kind of plays behind the striker obviously Gabriel Jesus is missing at the moment and um, they've got people that play on the wing that Felix can play there do you think that's a bit more of a well a well suited team I think Arsenal is definitely better suited to Joao Felix than Manchester mm. United on paper um, but do I think that in Arsenal's full starting 11 Joao Felix starts Right now, no. Mm. I think if everybody was fit and Gabriel Jesus was fit, I don't think he would displace any of Martin Jesus or Bukayo Saka. And I think that would be a problem for Joao Felix. He's surely going to be wanting to move to a club where he is guaranteed a starting position in the forward line. Um, and I also just don't think Arsenal are a club right now that are thinking about spending 21 million euros on a low knee when they're going to outlay 60 to 70 million euros on Mudrik. Mudrik I think yeah. it's a much smarter signing to, to move for Mudrik. I think he's a much more moldable player in, in the eyes of Mikel Arteta um, without very little ego, without any sort of baggage that comes with him um, on a long-term contract, a permanent contract at that. I think that Arsenal will only move for a player like Joao Felix if something dis- happens disastrous with Mikhailo Mudrik and, and that move collapses and Arsenal think we can actually go on and win the league from this position because I think Nketiah has done brilliantly since he's mm. come in. Yep. It's only yeah, a few very, weeks very until Gabi Jesus is back. I think get, I would still just be back. Mill Smith Rowe is on his way. Mill Smith Rowe is going to come back. You know, if Joao Felix comes in uh, to Arsenal on loan without a loan fee, 
then it is a sensational signing. But I, I don't think they have an immediate need for Joao Felix Arsenal. Interesting. Do you not think maybe the depth, Mikey, especially when you're trying to... If this was yeah. if this was Arsenal in third place or second place, maybe less so, but when they are top of the league uh, and a real chance of, of going on to win the league, mm. um, do you not think maybe a sign like this could help also push them across, along with Madrid? Because that's what's being spoken about, is both of them coming in. Yeah, I mean... I think I think in some ways you do kind of think with Arsenal just 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 do everything to that get, you can. To get the I mean, the it's the same with United though, because you know, so you know, United are probably one of the favourites now to get Champions League football. But there's going to come there's going to come a rocky there's going to be a rocky period between now and you know April. I'm sure of it. And um, you know, having you know someone like Joao Felix, despite the money, you know, if, if that guarantees you Champions League football. Um, then then it will have paid off. And the same with Arsenal with winning the league. I mean the the. You know, the, it can't even. I can't even think to imagine what you know what that you know that, what that's going to mean to Arsenal. You know, I think they are favourites now, seven points clear. And I think, despite Eddie and Ketia, you know, impressing since he's you know been back in the side, Jesus is going to come back. But at the same time, you know, what what kind of state is he going to be in? Mm. Um, yeah, I, I kind of think you know maybe Arsenal should just should just gamble and just, go, just, just, just go for it. And I know, yeah, like Pay the twenty-one think, mil. He, he won't. He won't. Obviously, he won't be. Um, you know, he, yeah, he won't be happy to to, to sit start bench. sit on the bench. Um, but at the same time, be more happy than I do. I do think he has the kind of skill set. You know, uh, he, he does he does the kind of things that Gabby Jesus was doing in the start of the season. He he is you know good at picking up the ball in deep areas and going past players and let you know laying it off for the likes of Martinelli and Saka, who've become more prominent goal scorers as the seasons have, as the season's gone on. Especially Saka, you know, his goal scoring ability has, has gone through the roof this season. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of think just go for it. To go be honest, for, I, wow. I, I think the Premier, I think the Premier League title is that is that big. And yeah, if they get Mudrick, in, it, I think it depends how much they spend on Mudrick as well. Let's let's remember, yeah, like yeah. If, if they have to play, pay over the odds for Mudrick, then suddenly maybe that Felix signing seems really silly. But it, you know, if they can get them both in for like under ninety million. Um, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't know, I, I don't think it's that bad. Like, because they're, like, they're, they're clearly not, it doesn't seem like they're going for a central midfield target yeah. this January. If they were, then I'd be concerned about them going for two attackers. But so far, it doesn't look like they're going for a central midfielder. And yeah, I think I think if that's, you know, that's their plan then. I think I'm more inclined with, with Mikey's thinking. When you're in this position here, just do everything you can to, to win this title. And, and I don't think Arsenal are in a position where finance, finances at the moment are, are, are really that bad. Um, they, they've seeming to, to spend a I agree, but, of money. But 21 million euro outlay on a loan. Is it is a lot. In, oh my goodness, it's a lot. <laughs> it, it, sure. Especially if this is a player that's not a guaranteed first team starter. You're, pay, you're paying 21 Literally million euros. Team starter. No, but he's also going to be there for the next six mm. years. Like I think if if you bring Joao Felix in at twenty, if he comes down, that and I do believe Atletico Madrid are going to drastically drop. Oh, hundred percent. I think mm. by about the twenty fifth of January, that'll be at about <laughs> five million euros. And if that's the case, and it's five million euros, I totally agree. Arsenal go all out, yeah, get Joao yeah. Felix through the door. But at twenty one million euros, it, it's it's a no brainer to say no, in my opinion. Interesting. Well, there's one other team that we need to talk about: Chelsea. Oh, Football don't. Club. What do we need to talk about um, them for? No, how many forwards have Chelsea got? They're, they're at the bottom for a reason. I don't think the the I don't think they are uh, as keen for it as the other two. That's for sure. Um, you're just going to drop 120 million on Enzo Fernandez. You want to do a 20 million euro loan? Oh, that's a, that's on a Chelsea. Well, Felix. I mean, Chelsea don't look like that. Pulisic, bothered, Chelsea don't look Ziyech, like they're bothered about Sterling. You've got Callum hudson on loan. Indeed. Kai Havertz playing through the middle. For sure. They Mason Mount drop. Out wide. Chelsea can't score goals, and apparently uh, Graham Potter is is very keen. Again, I think the money side of things actually is an issue. It's an issue for all three of these clubs. All three of these well, clubs. It's not an issue for you, is it? Um, well, by the looks of it, you never. You're dropping 120 um, million in January. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah, look, Chelsea Football Club. Ignoring you do ignoring not need him. Side. The title is which club needs him. You do not need him. Chelsea can't score goals. That is not an issue of personal. I, I mean, the problem is, is that Joao Felix. Is, hasn't you know been that much of a goal scorer? Yeah, no, I completely agree. And it's, the, and it's not an issue. Of, it's surely not an issue of personnel totally. Chelsea can't create chances and Chelsea can't score goals. And, it, yeah, and, that, no. and that does come down to a bit of personnel when it's been under two different managers. Partly, arguably, but let's not forget that some of those players well, won the Champions League Lampard. a year ago. A year yeah, half, sure, yeah. but they weren't necessarily creating chances out of, their, out, of their, out, of, out of nothing all the time, were they? Chelsea have never been a, a free-flowing Mason Mount, team, Mount is, it definitely Yeah, Mason Mount 100% chances. has. Mason Mount has 100%. Then you look at everyone else and it's, and it's not. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I also agree Joao Felix shouldn't be coming anywhere near Chelsea. I am kind of being a bit more devil's advocate here because I think there is a long-running... Uh, I mean, when you look at this, Chelsea squad in general there are issues all over the pitch but when you do look at this Chelsea squad creating chances 
has mm. been quite poor. Um, yep. And they brought in Raheem Sterling to kind of help with that, um, even though he's more of a finisher at yeah, City. Yeah, he's never been a massive um, chance creator. And, and, and he, he actually has maybe helped a little bit. But when Reese James isn't there, and that's how important, obviously, yeah. they, they yeah. go through there. I don't think Graham Potter would kind of turn his nose up at, at Jao Felix <laughs> if he ended up at the bridge. But I don't, left wing back. I don't no, think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, so let's, not waste back time. <laughs> let's not waste time uh, with that one. But guys at home, please let me know what you think is the best location for Jao Felix to spend the rest of this season at. Or do you think they'll leave at all? Or do you think, like Joe, that Atletico Madrid will be dropping their price come the end of or closing cool. uh, the January transfer window? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, click on screen right now for more. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.